You're watching the Physics Classroom's video tutorial on electric circuits. The topic of this video is comparing series and parallel circuits. And we want to know how can you use conventional circuit symbols to represent electric circuits and how do series and parallel arrangements of resistors compare and contrast to one another. Uh, Mr. H, let's get started. Throughout this video tutorial series on electric circuits, I've represented circuits by words such as those and by drawings that look maybe something like this. But it's common in a physics class or a physics book to represent circuits by what's known as a schematic diagram that represents the various components of that circuit by conventional circuit symbols. You've likely seen some of these. For instance, a single cell is represented by this symbol consisting of a long and a short line. A battery is a collection of cells and as such is represented by a collection of long and short lines. In both the symbol for the cell and the battery, the long line represents the positive terminal and the short line represents the negative terminal. We often connect our, our batteries and cells to resistors or light bulbs using a wire. These connecting wires are represented by a line and the light bulb or motor or heater is commonly referred to as a resistor and is represented by this zigzag symbol. We can have switches in our circuits which could be open or could be closed, in which case they would look like these. Now if I were to take these circuit symbols and use them to represent the verbal description and drawing above, then I would need to use a single cell and a resistor symbol and then some lines to connect them as connecting wires. And the result would look like this. Let's discuss how to create a schematic diagram from a verbal description such as this one. Three D cells are placed in a battery pack to power a circuit containing three light bulbs. A good starting point is to do a drawing of what that looks like. A drawing showing a collection of three cells in a battery pack as shown and three light bulbs connected by wires to the battery pack and to one another. Now to draw the schematic diagram, I need to have a battery symbol, which is a collection of long and short lines, and resistors to represent the light bulbs, which is the zigzag lines, and then connecting wires. And so I'm going to draw it that looks like this. Now in drawing it this way, both the diagram and the drawing, I presume something about those light bulbs, that they were connected in such a way that any charge that passed through the first light bulb would then automatically go past to the second light bulb and then through the third light bulb in a consecutive fashion. When you connect light bulbs like this, you've done what's called a series connection. But it's not the only way to connect light bulbs, as we'll soon see. We'll see that there's another way to connect them in such a way that charge passes through only one light bulb and that's coming up next. My second example looks much like the first. I still have three D cells in a battery pack powering three light bulbs. But when I go to arrange those light bulbs, I'm going to arrange them differently. Not in the so-called series fashion, where the light bulbs lead from one to the other to the other, but instead I'm going to connect them as shown by this drawing. You'll notice that the, the wire leading from the battery eventually comes to a point on the circuit, and at that point there's some branching going on, and each light bulb is in its own separate branch or section of the circuit. If I were to represent this by a schematic diagram, I would use the circuit symbol for the battery, a collection of long and short lines, and the circuit symbol for the resistor to represent the light bulb, and then some connecting wires. And that schematic diagram looks something like this. We refer to this means of connecting your light bulbs as a parallel connection. And in a parallel connection, there's a point on the circuit, known as a node, where the wires branch off of one another. And and I've represented the node by a red dot on this, on this schematic diagram. You'll also notice there's a second red dot, another node, where the wires come back together. Now what makes a parallel connection so different than a series connection is that any charge that traverses a loop around the circuit will not go through every light bulb. At the node, charge is diverted to one of the three pathways, and then it goes to the light bulb, comes back to the second node, and then returns to the negative terminal of the battery. So there's a collection of three possible pathways a charge can make around this circuit. As we have seen, there are two basic ways of connecting multiple bulbs in a circuit. First, there's the series circuit, in which there's only one pathway by which charge can make its way around the circuit. 
any charge that exit the battery will go through every light bulb before it returns to the battery. It goes to the first bulb, then the second bulb, and then the third bulb because in a series circuit the bulbs are arranged in back-to-back -back consecutive fashion. But there's also the parallel circuit. In a parallel circuit there is more than one pathway by which charge can make its way around the circuit. And any charge making a complete loop will only go through one of the light bulbs. And this is because in a parallel circuit we've arranged the bulb such that at the node the charge diverts to separate branches passes through the bulb and then returns back to the battery. The manner in which you connect your bulbs, whether it be series or parallel, will have huge effects upon the overall resistance and current in that circuit and upon the voltage drops and the current in each of the individual bulbs. A common lab procedure involves increasing the number of light bulbs in a series circuit to observe its effect. What we would observe that increasing the number of light bulbs causes the brightness of each individual bulb to decrease, an indicator of the fact that the overall current has also decreased. This is evidence that supports the claim that increasing the number of resistors in a series circuit will increase the overall resistance and decrease the overall current. Another common lab procedure involves unscrewing a bulb from its socket to observe the effect upon the other light bulbs. We would observe for a series circuit that unscrewing a light bulb from a socket would cause the other two bulbs to no longer light. This makes sense since there's only one pathway by which charge can make its way around the circuit, and if that pathway is interrupted, none of the light bulbs will light. When the same procedure is done with the parallel arrangement of light bulbs, we often use an indicator bulb to indicate the amount of current occurring outside of the branches. We observe that as you increase the number of light bulbs arranged in parallel, the brightness of that indicator bulb increases, telling us that the overall current in the circuit is also increasing. This is evidence that leads to the claim that increasing the number of resistors arranged in parallel actually has the effect of decreasing the overall resistance and increasing the overall current. If we were to unscrew one of the light bulbs from a circuit, what we would observe of the other light bulbs is that they would remain lit. And this makes sense since those other light bulbs are in their own separate and independent branch. Interrupting one of the branches has no effect upon the other branches. For many students, the most non-intuitive aspect of parallel circuits is that increasing the number of resistors causes the overall resistance to decrease. In other words, more resistors equal less resistance. To explain that idea, I like to use a tollway analogy. On a tollway system, it's the toll booths that are the resistors, or bottleneck, that reduce the flow of cars through the entire system. If you could, would consider adding more toll booths but doing it in series, Series, that would make matters worse. Adding more toll booths in this fashion would cause the overall resistance to increase and the flow rate to actually become worse. But there is a way to increase the number of toll booths and decrease the total resistance. It's just not arranged that way. If you were to arrange your toll booths in parallel, placing each toll booth in its separate path, giving drivers their choice of which pathways to go through, then you would have the effect of decreasing the overall resistance and increasing the flow rate of cars on the tollway system. In fact, one could imagine that if you, in, if, that if you added 10 toll booths in parallel, that you would have a dramatic increase in the flow rate because you dramatically decrease the resistance in that section of the circuit. It's so at this time in every video that I like to help you out with an action plan, a series of next steps for making the learning stick. But before I help you out, could you help us out by giving us a like, subscribing to the channel, or leaving a question or comment in the comment section below. Now for your action plan. Here are three resources that you'll find on our website, and I've left links to each in the description section of this video. There's a concept builder with three difficulty levels. The first one would be perfect for you right now. And then there's a couple of tutorial pages that would help Help you freshen up on the topic. Whatever you do, I wish you the best of luck. I'm Mr. H. Thank you for watching.